recently came across this uh, little kit for last rites, a uh, little wooden cross and holy oils and things like this. Uh, holy water, excuse me, not oils. And uh, just thought I'd read this with you. I'm going to show it to you then here in just a minute, but uh, I'll read this thing quick here. It's un unbelievable. And, uh, you know, this whole thing, not one verse of Scripture. I mean, you'd think when somebody's dying, you'd think that uh, you'd want to at least include a few verses of Scripture. But uh, pretty funny here. It says, uh, what to do in case of serious illness. Number one, call the priest and give him correct name and address. Number two, tell him if the patient is a child or an adult and if he is conscious or not. Number three, indicate if the patient can receive Holy Communion. Give something of the condition of the patient according to the doctor's report or to your own opinion. Number four, make haste to prepare the patient's room for the coming of the priest. A. Place a chair and a table at the head of the bed. Cover the table with a clean white cloth. B. Arrange the following articles on the table. A crucifix upright with two lighted candles. 51% beeswax. That's in the book of Acts somewhere. I'd, someplace there. A receptacle containing holy water. Somewhere in the Bible too, I'm sure. A glass of ordinary water and a teaspoon. A bowl for cleansing the priest's fingers. We'll be back to that one in a little bit. If you foresee that the patient will receive the last rites, in other words, when they die, place on the table a saucer or small plate containing a bit of table salt or a slice of lemon with a supply of cotton. Okay. In the kitchen, prepare a wash basin with soap, water, and a towel. This is all in the Bible. I mean, this, they were doing this all the time. Number six, prepare a patient for extreme unction by having hands face and feet clean for holy oils. When in doubt as to whether or not the patient will receive the last rites, be certain by making all the necessary pre preparations. Now here's what gets good. Number seven, when the priest enters with the host, he should be met at the door by an adult member of the family carrying a lighted candle. He shows up with a cookie. You know, the consecrated host. Jesus has come to the house, you know, in a form of a cookie. Comes in there, you come to a lighted candle. <clears throat> Number eight, the, this person should genuflect on greeting the priest and then proceed in silence to the patient's room. <laughs> then it's bowing yourself to a cookie. Isn't that funny? Number nine here, uh, when the priest enters the room, all should kneel. If the patient wishes to confess, all should leave the room quietly. As soon as the priest opens the door, they may return to pray for the sick. Number 10, when the priest leaves, he, if he still carries the host, he must be escorted to the door in the same manner as he was received. The patient, patient should be left alone for a while. If the priest used the cotton for the holy oils, it should be burned in the fire. You ready to be grossed out? Listen to this. The drinking water in which he purified his fingers should be given to the sick person to drink or poured slowly onto the fire. <laughs> the priest comes in, puts his dirty, rotten, filthy fingers, you know, just came from molesting a child or something. He's put them in a bowl and washes his hands and stuff like this. And you give it to the sick person to drink. That way it finishes them off if they're not already dead. <laughs> oh, where is this stuff at in Scripture? Pagan. It's completely pagan superstition. Note, the set in which this leaflet was packed is a complete last rites set. It may be used for administering the last rites or in giving Holy Communion to the sick on first Fridays. The candles supplied with this set are made of 51% beeswax to conform to the rules of the church. The quality and workmanship, workmanship of this set is guaranteed by the manufacturer Jeweled Cross Company Incorporated North Attleboro, Massachusetts, USA. Sold and distributed by religious goods, dealers, and soul stores throughout the USA and Canada. <laughs> then you get extra candles. You know, here, I'll show it to you. Unreal. Okay. <laughs> so there you go. I mean, you know. What a pleasant thought, you know. The, you got the priest, and he's there. He's washing his hands in the this dirty water or whatever. And uh, then you, you take the 
his dirty washed hands water and you make the person drink it. <laughs> Ridiculous. I mean, people. If this is the church that Jesus Christ founded, the Catholic Church is his church apparently, where's this stuff at in Scripture? I mean, I know it's kind of a big understanding you know, thing there for Catholics. I mean, shouldn't this stuff be somewhere in the Bible? But it's not. Why? It's pagan. <laughs> I mean, Catholics out there, please get saved. You know? I mean, my word. Get away from this pagan superstitious stuff. It's just crazy. So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.